famous prayer that has ever been uttered, what has come to be called the Lord's Prayer, Jesus told us that this is how we are to pray, our Father, who is in heaven, that is, who's all around us, closer than the air we breathe. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we have been reminded again over the last couple of days about the extent to which his kingdom uh, is is still resisted and exists in the presence of many kingdoms that are deeply opposed to it in buffalo there was a mass murder 10 people killed 13 shot 11 of them were black the police chief there says this is an act of pure evil and it was motivated by racial hatred these were all real people. One of them was a woman who um, I think was 86 years old and her family talk about how she sang in the church choir, but she will not be in the church choir this week. And she taught her family how to love God. And now we need to uh, be aware of what's happening in this world to read these words and lament and protest and um, connect them to the person and the message of Jesus because it is simply true, he is the hope of this world. And if it is to be transformed from one person to another person, to systems, to nations, to neighborhoods, to supermarkets, to the way that people get along with each other, it will be through the picture of love and peace and justice that Jesus brought. So let's talk about this for a minute, and then I wanna to get to what Dallas wrote in renovation of the heart about being a follower of this person, Jesus. One of the ways in which our world is deeply fallen and deeply troubled is when it comes to race and racism and racial relationships and racial justice. And this is not uh, ultimately a political issue at all. It's an issue of humanity and love and God. Uh, Janelle Paris and others have written about how the idea of race is a relatively recent construct. And this is really important. Um, in the Bible, if you read through those wonderful statements of unity that are promised, that in Jesus now there's neither uh, Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male or female, or that one day in God's redeemed humanity, there will be people of every tribe and nation and tongue and people, what you will notice is you never see a mention in the Bible of race. You don't see the word race. You don't see black or white. And there's a reason for this. It's not because there were no divisions in the ancient world. Always, all the way back to Cain and Abel, us versus them, otherness, the other, not loving the other, has been a problem that manifests the sin that's inside all of us. So that problem is always there. However, people didn't get divided up uh, by categories that we think of in our day as race. People didn't get divided up in terms of skin color. Folks certainly noticed that skin was different color and it could contribute to the sense of otherness, but it was not until the 15th, 16th, 17th centuries, particularly when uh, the New World was being founded and slavery was being used. Slavery's been around forever. But one of the things that was discovered was if you were from Northern Europe and you had a slave that was from Northern Europe and they ran away from you, they could blend in and it would be hard to catch them. But if the slaves were from Africa, then if they ran away, they would be able to be identified more easily. And so it became desirable to enslave people that looked real different, people that were from Africa. But then there was this problem, how do we morally justify that? And so the idea that different races existed, and so notions like the Caucasoid or the Mongoloid or the Negroid, when I was growing up, I would hear those as though they were scientific categories. They were not, they never were. They were inventions relatively recently in human history that were among other things created 
to justify the existence of slavery. And that is why, although the Bible is big on the unity that God promises for human beings, you don't see the category of race there. It was developed uh, as a sinful attempt to justify slavery. And this is why also we need to connect the person and message of Jesus in our life to the troubled world and society in which we live, where innocent people can get gunned down in a supermarket in Buffalo. What is needed is not simply education. What is needed is not simply greatest, greater tolerance for diversity. And this is clear if you just do a real simple thought exercise. Imagine that there were no racial differences among people, that everybody's skin color was exactly the same. Would that usher in utopia? Then would everybody respond to other people with perfect love and generosity and respect? No, of course not, because the problem is the human heart. Now, that does not at all lessen the damage of sin when it gets into systems or the problem of racial injustice. It actually shows how deep it is. And so the person of Jesus comes to deliver us out of the kingdom of this world of hatred and division and otherness and my side versus your side into the kingdom of God and the kingdom of his love. So now this is Dallas writing on page 239, Renovation of the Heart, because the renovation of the heart is ultimately the only offer of redemption for humanity. Can we avoid the vessel trap, Della says, that is where we confuse the earthen vessel, our own traditions and uh, beliefs and so on, from the treasure that is Jesus and his life that is available to us with him. Certainly we can't avoid having vessels and we must be tender to them for that is a part of what it is to be human and finite. Even, this is interesting, even Jesus had his vessel it was a Jewish one, and that became the first vessel trap the earliest congregation of disciples faced. The book of Acts and the New Testament letters are a record of how it was transcended, and so we can't avoid making the vessel the treasure. Very interesting. Us versus them, uh, the other ethnic differences, was at the heart of the first great challenge that the Jesus movement faced. And in that case, it was the fact that Jesus was Jewish. Now, it's real important to distinguish between Jesus and Christianity. People sometimes think they are the same thing. And they're not. One of the ways that we know this is Jesus himself was not a Christian. Jesus was Jewish. Christianity is very important. It's part of the vessel. Uh, it, it helps us understand um, how to worship and how to live and so on. But Jesus is bigger even than the religion of Christianity. And part of what happened when his movement began was that people struggled with, what about people that are over there on the other side? What about them? And so Jesus sends a vision to Peter. It's actually talked about in Acts 10 and 11. It gets repeated because it is such a hard lesson to learn. And Peter says, I think it's in Acts chapter 15, verses 34 and 35. Now at last, I understand that God has no favorites, but accepts people from every nation. Or Paul says in Acts 17, a statement that would become very important in America, abolition movement, from one nation, one blood, the old King James says, God created all human beings, one bloodism. And so we are be to become uh, disciples, apprentices, followers of this person, Jesus, and that is the treasure. So now today I ask Jesus Will you help me to see the image of God in every person I encounter, young or old, black or white, my language or a different one, tall or short, rich or poor? God, would you help me to see human beings the way that you see them and therefore love them the way that you love them and honor them the way that you honor? This is a deep part of the Jesus movement. This is coming to see the treasure, his life, his love, inside me, inside you, inside every person. This is the hope of the world. This is the treasure we store. Let's live in it today.